relax as we go ahead and welcome Brother Panic back to the Blues Couch or back to Blues Couch with us here. Welcome, Brother Panic. Peace. What's going on, Miss Blue? Everything, everything is going on. Just wow, wow, wow. That's what I got to say from the feedback that I got from the last show. As we continue here in the forum and covering all these things that we'll talk about, this evening we're going to be getting into some of the teachings of the Gnostics and talking about that. Is that where we're going to pick up at? Yes, we're going to pick up here um, in Gnostic thought. What I did was a collaboration. I took a bunch of Gnostic quotes and I'm, we're going to elaborate on that. One of the things I see missing or what I see helpful or could be helpful is uh, injecting Gnostic thought or Gnostic mythology or Gnostic philosophy into a conscious understanding because mm. the Gnostics uh, pretty much came out with it. They are later-day Egyptians, later-day Egyptians. After the Greeks and all of them sat their ass up in our shit, after the dynasties were gone, these were a group, a group of, of, of men with knowledge who said, look, we ain't got no time for the initiations, figuring out hieroglyphs. We're going to give it to you in a nutshell, what right. this goddamn, these Egyptians were talking about. Okay. So, so, so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wanted to just kind of interject the question because this is something that kind of stirred up a lot of energy in the community when it came to thinking about the Gnostics and, and sort of seeing how they've been depicted. Um, whenever you do research of the Gnostics, can you give us just a little bit of more insight about how that correlation of how them becoming sort of the later day Egyptians and how that sort of ties in so people can get a real good you, clear picture? Yeah. Um, what happened is, um, like, uh, Egypt was basically a school, so a lot of lot of groups went through comedic study, went across the world, and and taught basic, basically out of Egypt, out of out of camp. Mm-hmm. Um, some some of the people around the world after Atlantis and all of this went down uh, uh, was spread out across the world. So, like the Moors, like any other group, a lot of them learned their sciences and just spread it across the world. Right. So, Egypt was that university. So, after it was over, conquered, done, the leftover information, as it is here today, was here around the world. This was just another group, just called Knowers and Gnostics. There's different versions of, they would say, uh, 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 Kabbalic Gnosticism, this Gnosticism. The word Gnostic means knower or knowing. Gotcha. Gnosticism means knowing. So knowing. it's it, what happened with the Gnostics, of the Coptic Egyptian Gnostics, most of their work has become what we call the Christian Bible. Mm. What, um, and and as, it, as it was adapted, oh, let, me, let me get something here. As it was adapted later, later on, that um, into what we know today as the Gospels. Prior to that, this is based upon Gnostics' works. Um, when they found the Nag Hammadi Library and they found um, found the Dead Sea Scrolls, it put some of those original books back. Got and it. And if you if you hear now, they'll talk about now. This will be a contradiction because remember they said this Bible was from God, the words of God. This will be a contradiction now that you find in all of these books. Mm. So what they started telling you that there was a canon, and because there was so much pressure, they couldn't put all of these books in the canon. But um, it's all bullshit. Most people will see Gnosticism connected to Christianity may not look. They'll always give you pictures, put some white folks on it. And because they were in Rome and Greek, Greece where they taught this, and we convinced ourselves that this is somehow belongs to them, that um, we, uh, it, it, you may not pay attention, you may just not know or you may not pay it the attention you deserve. But what I found out is once I started studying Gnosticism, what happened was it gave me a perspective on everything I started to study afterwards because it said it outright. What I noticed, everything I started studying afterwards was the long way to getting to the uh, 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 Gnostic understanding. What the Gnostics said straight out, clearly if you study comedic thought, more than just thinking it's pretty pictures, right? Um, you will find that um, they were talking about getting out of here. They were talking about this actually being your problem, the earth. 
Gnostics just say it straight out. Now, as you see in these Gnostic quotes, we'll do that. Now, I always ask someone to show me the hieroglyph where they're talking about health, economy, um, uh, uh, raising babies, um, any of that stuff. Everything the Egyptians talk about was leaving this place, getting out of here. So if right. the Egyptians or the Camites had it so great, why, would, why, would, why did everything they leave behind was telling you to get out of here? Because they understood this place to be a flaw. Now, um, in Gnosticism, later on, when they just said, okay, we're going to just tell you what the Egyptians was talking about. We're just going to give it to you raw dog. And then they had uh, Simon Valentinius. These guys were teaching on the hill. The same Jesus story, the same Christian story. When you hear that they were feeding Christians to the lions right. in Rome, it was actually the Gnostics. Because everybody knows now, based upon Walter Williams' book, that, the, that Constantine, a Roman, is the one that, that designed Christianity today. He started set, uh, uh, um, setting up the template um, okay. for... He started setting up the template for for what we know as the Jesus today and, and using the cross to conquer missionaries and so on. So why would they kill Christians when it was their agenda? They were killing Gnostics because the Gnostics went, these later day Egyptians were starting to take over, retake over Rome again. You got to remember, uh. this was a, 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 a corrupt time. Hmm. This was a corrupt time. So when you got Jesus fighting the Roman government and all of that, and he in the Roman government trying to kill him. What we're talking about is Gnostics. Got it. People that were speaking um, the truth about this lesser God and 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 this uh, and in this um and and in the, the earth itself. And we're going to get into quotes because I collected the quotes. But <clears throat> this is what uh, um first I'm going to say this. I want to see that Percy Jackson in the lightning thing. We're going to get into that real quick. All right. All now, right. As predicted, it is connected to the Avatar. Percy Jackson is nothing but Barack Obama. Now, I want y'all to go check this. In the movie, first is, the, first is a white boy named Jackson. That's a nigga right there. Percy is, of course, Perseus. In the Greek mythology, Perseus steals lightning, which is just Kundalini, and which is just a, um, um, you know, lightning or light symbolizes, um, uh, symbolizes, Enlightenment, this knowledge that you seek. Zeus in the motherfuckers, the twelve Olympians, which represent nothing but time, your prison, your 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 lesser gods of demiurge, which we'll get into, okay. um, that holds you here. Zeus tortures you with lightning bolts because what what that in the many layered meanings of that mythology, one of it is showing you he's beating your ass with what you do not know because you have became human. Mm. So. The lightning thief is supposed to steal this enlightenment and give it to the planet. This Perseus is nothing but Horus. You get what I'm saying? Right. Horus. Horus, the redeeming part of you that redeems the father, the old you, the hidden part, Osiris, which is that dead. The, the active part in third dimension becomes the root. Doing the work set is, represents nothing but humanity itself. Now, um, in this fucking movie, these, this, they turn the whole shit around. The lightning thief gives the fucking lightning. This just got some spoilers in it. So if you want to see the movie, you better mute your shit now. <laughs> the lightning thief is, is he's bringing back this, this lightning to the fucking, to these fucking Zeus and these bastards so they can rule over us when he's supposed to actually be giving it to the motherfucking, the people who are in hell. Now, throughout the whole movie, they're trying to get to Hades. Mm. To Hades. To Hades. What does that mean? They they're trying to go to Hades to get this to um to 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 rest. He in the movie he had to go to Hades to rescue his mother. So we've seen that in Avatar. They were trying to communicate with Ewa, the great mother. So what they realized, what it seems that they realize, that this shit is about them connecting with the mother energy again. Them connecting with the great mother energy. So he goes to Hades, which represents hell. Um, to to to, and they made the connection there. They made a few. They had to search for blue pearls. Of course, as I said, they fought all these titans, Medusa. They made them the bad guy. It was nothing but niggas trying to get this lightning bolt. You know what I'm saying? Right. Us trying to get our original light back from this goddamn demiurge energy that pushed us back into third dimension. That's what these fucking 
That's why the Olympics is happening.